All the parts have been given a thin coat of primer. It's an automotive lacquer based primer. I didn't film any of this. It was just using this uh, high build automotive primer and applying it with a roller brush. Not very exciting to watch. Wing has been put up so I, I don't have it out. The, uh, as I said, it was a thin coat of primer and I'm going to end up going back over it a second time with another coat of primer before I sand. There are some thin spots that I need to make sure they get good coverage. But what I really want to show is a dramatic difference between fiberglass applied using the pill ply method and that using the flow coat, the old school flow coat method. And I thought I had done a pretty good job with the flow coat. I ended up using the West Systems epoxy for the flow coat and a different local epoxy to actually apply the fiberglass, but they're both finishing resins and they were both pretty similar. The West Systems was definitely a little bit thicker, but I applied the flow coat to the flight control surfaces and the fuselage, at least the top of the fuselage on the sides that had fiberglass, and the wing got the peel ply. So, here's a quick look along the top of the fuselage. There, it's not perfect. There are some areas that uh, are a little bit rough. They do show a little bit of weave. That's probably where I didn't quite get the peel ply saturated with the epoxy, but these are easy to fix. The top of the battery hatch was also done with pill ply. So it's pretty nice, pretty smooth. This should be easily taken care of. As a matter of fact, I think a second coat of primer will probably be good enough for this. But now let's compare that with the flight controls. So I can get a good angle here so you can see this. Yeah, I think you should be able to see all this weave sticking up. Even though I thought I had done a good job putting a nice even coat of, or a nice even flow coat on, all of these flight control surfaces to some extent have quite a bit of weave showing. So, I think I got two choices. Basically, you apply multiple coats of primer and sanding or go with a automotive spot putty such as Bondo. I will apply one more coat of primer since I'm gonna do the whole model with another coat. And then I'll end up going straight to the Bondo for the flight control surfaces. It's really a little more work than I wanted to do, but I'm gonna be putting a gloss white paint job on this model. At least part of it's going to be white. And white will sh a white gloss will show every single imperfection. So I am willing to spend and I will spend the time trying to make the surfaces of the model look good for the paint. The fabric covered the rudder and the part of the fuselage that was covered in fabric. That looks pretty good. The one coat of sanding sealer and then the single coat of primer worked pretty well. I don't think this will need anything else. Matter of fact, I won't give the fabric covered part a second coat of primer. Let me interject here. A comment was made asking about the compatibility of dope with Mod Podge and Sanding Sealer. And while I have not used Dope, because I, I can't get it in Taiwan, this is, the rudder is Mod Podge adhesive with a water-based sanding sealer. And then the primer is the automotive lacquer. And I have not had any compatibility issue with the lacquer primer over top of the water-based sanding sealer or the Mod Podge to adhere the fabric. So again, I've not tried dope, but 
dope is basically the same type lacquer based uh, material I believe and if I didn't have trouble with the automotive primer I don't think you'd have trouble with the dope as well but let me emphasize that the sanding sealer is water based now if you used a solvent based sanding sealer and then put dope over top of that that might be a problem I know with lacquer based materials the lacquer on top coat basically dissolves the coat underneath and they kind of meld together I don't know if dope would do that or not so with a solvent based sanding sealer it would be best to test to make sure for no compatibility issues while I'm doing the epoxy micro balloon thing with the cow I'm going to go ahead and take care of some gaps in the battery hatch specifically the gap right along the hinge here yeah, that's pretty big and then some gaps on the sides up to about the middle of the hatch and then once I do this part and it cures I'll go work on the other side I'm using a two hour pot life finishing resin epoxy for this and I'm going to use the brown phenolic micro balloons just because they sand a little bit easier I have clear packing tape down and that prevents the balloons from sticking to the fuselage just sticking to the hatch itself Now the clear packing tape is actually covering over the hinge and it's also over top of the hinge pin that I have so I don't think I'm going to get any of the mix on that. I'm just going to try to push a little bit, a little bit of this down into the gap. Again I don't need a whole lot, just enough to fill the gap at the surface but anything extra is just kind of added weight for no reason. The epoxy mix was allowed to cure overnight and now it's time to sand away the excess. The packing tape was not removed for the sanding. It stays in place until right before the final finish sand when it will be removed. Let's see if I have sanded enough back where I can break this thing open. I'm going to try a ruler up underneath the lip here. After sanding back and cleaning up, looks pretty good. A couple of spots I'm going to have to do a little bit of touch up on. I probably should not have left the whole full hinge pin in. Now I'm going to have to go in and kind of fill in this little gap right here. It won't be too hard to do. I should go ahead and snip these into two individual hinges. I just thought it easier to keep one long piece of music wire than two smaller pieces. But uh, not bad, a little touch up right here. I'll just fill this in with some automotive spot putty. A couple of other little areas. 
And then this right, this side right here, I'll take care of when I do the other side. Other side of the battery hatch to get its epoxy micro balloons filler. I had a fairly large gap here, really on both ends. And then this was an uneven gap between the hatch and the fuselage, and I wanted to make that a little bit better. Um, I think instead of having a line all the way across, a gap all the way across, I think I may just try to put a little um, finger pull right here, a little gap right here, just in one little spot. That way I can lift the hatch up. It's been curing 24 hours. Let's see if I can pop it free. This one's going to be doubly difficult because not only do I have the epoxy mix, but I also have those magnets, which are really strong. This might take a little bit of doing. All right, I'm going to try to get a little bit smarter here. Instead of beating my head against the wall trying to open this in, I removed the hinges over here, or the hinge pins. Now I'm going to try to lift this side up and see if I can pop this off. All right, you can teach an old dog new tricks. Before going any further, I gave the whole front end a spray of uh, primer. I also sprayed the engine box because I'm gonna end up painting this black since a lot of it can be seen, the openings in the front of the cow. I'm gonna create a shadow effect by painting this all black. I was thinking about painting the inside of the cow black, but I ended up just priming that in the gray. And I think I'll just leave it at that. So I took a look at, this is the reason why I primed it is I wanted to see what this looked like and pretty nice. I'm going to use this right here as my finger hole. It's got a little bit of a gap. I could close that completely off, but I'm going to use this as my finger pole. This part right here, you came and see there's a line. I mean, it's completely hidden. We'll call this the final disposition of the battery hatch. I sanded back the primer, added a little more automotive spot putty on the corners. I added some here to fill in this little gap that was still remaining. This becomes my finger pull. So that hatch line is fairly well hidden. I'm pretty happy with it. Yes, I still got a couple of little spots and this is where my OCD starts kicking in. I gotta just say enough's enough and call it good enough.